Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. Uh, we are going to be uh, solving some equations. So we have a few equations with one variable that we will solving for that variable. This is problems taken from CPM course three. This is section 5.1.2, specifically number five, uh, review preview 5-22. So it says solve the following equations. Be sure to show your work carefully and check your answers. So I'll go through that process. So remember when we're solving an equation and in solving an equation, in this case, each of my equations only have one variable, maybe multiple variable terms, but one variable to solve for. So we're looking for what number, right? Solving an equation is, is finding what number can I put into that X, do the math and get equal uh, e equality in this equation. So in other words, for this one specifically, what do I put in there? in that X that, and do the math here, order of operations, multiply three times something, three times something minus four, then times two would equal 22. That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? So I could play the guessing game, just start throwing numbers in until I kind of see and figure out maybe what it is. You know, if X was 10, three times 10 is 30, 30 minus four is 26, 26 times two is 42 so or actually 52 so that wouldn't be the right answer right so i can keep guessing or there's a process in solving equations right there's there's three steps general steps the first step is to simplify right that means like right here and i always by the way too is on my e on my equations i throw the um a line down the equal sign so that way i make sure I'm doing, I can see there's two sides of the equation and I'm being balanced and all of that, all that I do. So the first is simplify. So over here, 22 is can't do anything else, but over here I, I have some distributing I could do. And so I'm going to do that first. So that means when the two is outside of a parentheses, you distribute it, you multiply it into each of the terms. So two times three X, because you're doubling all of it, right? I'm doubling all of it. So two times three X is six X minus two times four is eight, right? It's doubling it all. Double the six X, double the four. C equals 22. So now I've simplified. That was my first step. My second step is to isolate. Isolate means get alone the X term, right? The term that has the X. And in this case, there's only one term with X. So I just got to get that alone. So that means I need to get rid of this minus eight. To do that, you use inverse operations, right? So I'm going to add eight. Minus eight, opposite of it is add eight. So to both sides. And uh, and what you do to one side of an equation, you always do to the other, right? So that's this why I put this line there. So I want to show that I'm balancing what I'm doing. So now I have that. that Why did I add, add eight? I added eight, so this would go away. I'm trying to cancel that out to isolate my X term. So I get 6X. So the, ice, the X term is isolated. Equals over here. I can combine those and I get 30. My last term, my last is always to divide by the coefficient. Okay, so the coefficient, remember that that term coefficient means the number that's in front of the variable, the number that's being multiplied to the variable. In this case, six is being multiplied to the variable. So I do the opposite, which is division. Because the reason why I'm dividing is I want my X. I want a single X. Six divided by six is one. It's a single X. So what do I do to one side? I do the other. 30 divided by six is five. So there's what I think is the answer. X equals five. But then they say, check your answers. What does that mean to check it? So I'm only going to do that a couple times. But checking it means plug your answer back into the original equation to see if it's true. So two, does two times the quantity three times five minus four equal 22. That's checking it. I'm going to take that five, plug it in, and then do the math to see, use order of operations to see if it's true. So order of operations tell me to multiply three times five first. So I get 15 minus four. And then and then inside the parentheses, I still got to do the 15 minus four before I multiply. 15 minus four is 11. So now I have two times 11, which does equal 22. So it does check out. So that's the process of solving. Simplify. Isolate the X term, divide by the coefficient, then check to see if your answer is right. Okay, so that's A. So I took a little bit of time on that, but I'll go a little quicker here for B. 
B now, again, what are we doing? I'm going to put my, e my, my equal uh, divider, my, e my equation divider, so I know that's where my equal sign is, and both sides are what I do to one, I'd have to do the other. So first step is simplify. Looks like I have some distributed property here, so this becomes 12x minus 30, right? I multiplied the 6 that times each of those, so I get 12x minus 30 equals over here, the negative in front, again, also has to be distributed. So it becomes negative x and then minus a negative. So that becomes a negative 4 or minus 4, either when you look at it. So that negative gets distributed, changes the signs. Now I've simplified, so isolate the x term. That means get all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other, right? So I want the x term all by itself. So I'm going to add x from this side. I'm going to do a positive x because if it's a negative x, positive x makes that go to 0 and over here as well. Okay, so now I have, uh, over here I have 13x, because when you add 1x to 12, you get 13. 13x minus 30 equals, over here I have a negative 4 that's left, because that went to 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Then, still got to isolate. I'm still on step 2. Isolate the x term. So, add 30, because that's the opposite of minus 30. Right? Add 30. So now I have 13x is equal to, because... I added 30, and that negative 30 and 30 canceled. And then negative 4 and positive 30 is 26. Last one is to divide by the coefficient. Right now I'm on this step, divide by the coefficient. The coefficient is 13, divided by 13. And in this case, we're going to get x equals 2. x equals 2. Okay. And if I was going to check my answers here, I would put them back in and do the math, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, and then over here, put the 2 in here, 2 plus 4 is 6, with the negative out front, it's negative 6, so sure enough, it checks out. So checking it is putting the number back in and doing the math. All right, C. With C, uh, first of all, simplify, and I have some simplifying on this side to do. 3y can't be, there's nothing to combine, or we'll leave it at 3y, but this side I can. I got to distribute that minus because I got to set a parentheses here. So the minus goes through, it becomes 2 minus y, and then instead of the plus 2, now it's minus 2, right? You distribute that minus. And then I get to combine like terms. I have a 2 minus 2, right? A 2 and a minus 2 becomes 0. Those cancel, so all that's left on this side is just negative y is equal to 3y. All right? So then I'm going to add y to both sides. I want to get my y's all alone. So over here, I have 0 is equal to 4y. So I isolated the x term was my second step. I kind of got ahead of myself there. I did the simplifying. This was simplifying, getting down to here. Then isolate the x term means get uh, the x term or variable term. In this case, it's y, right? So variable term. Got the y's on this side. So now I have that. So if, if I divide by the coefficient, I can do that. Divide by 4, but you're still going to get what? y is equal to 0. No matter how you look at this y is equal to 0 because 4 times anything to be 0 is 0. So double check to make sure that made sense, right? If I put a 0 into here, 0 plus 2 is 2, and then 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0. So 0 is checks out. So 0 is an answer. It's a number. That is the solution, y equals 0. D. D, again, simplify. So right here I've got some simplifying. So it's 3 plus... I distribute, so 4x plus 4, when you multiply the 4 through the parentheses, and then still combine like terms, so I have 4x plus 7, and on this side, just that 159, okay? Now, isolate the x term, so in this case, subtract 7 from both sides. Those 7s cancel, so we have 4x is equal to, let's see, that's 152 when I subtract 7. Then divide by the coefficient. I'm on step three. Divide by the coefficient. So I've just got to figure out what is 152 divided by four. Let's see, it goes in there. Three, so 38, I believe. Yep, 38. Okay, so there's my x equals 38, right? And if I wanted to check it again, I could put 38 in the x. 38 plus 1 is 39. Multiply through 4 times 39. You're going to get 156. 
and then 156 plus 3 is 159, so it checks out. All right, there we go.